Please be seated. is now in session for this morning's proceeding the chamber will continue to hear the testimony of the witness so so cheered and for the afternoon session we will hear the testimony of a witness that is TCW648 Mr. Dao and San, could you report the attendance of parties and individuals to today's proceeding? Dao and San, Mr. President, for today's hearing, all parties are present. As for Nguyen Chi, he is present in the holding cell downstairs pursuant to the decision by the trial chamber concerning his health. The national lead co-lawyer, that is Counsel Pei Ong, is absent for this morning session due to his uh, personal commitment. As stated by you, Mr. President, this morning we will continue to hear the testimony of a witness, So So Chit, and for the afternoon session we will hear the testimony of TCW648. TCW648 already took an oath this morning and confirms to his best knowledge and ability he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is Nguyen Chi and Kism Horn, nor to any of the civil parties recognized in this case. Mr. Mom Rattier would also be the duty counsel for this witness. For today's proceeding, we also have a reserved witness that is pursuant to the Memorandum of Understanding. That is document E266-3 and 266-83. President, thank you. The floor is now given to the prosecution to put questions to this witness. You may proceed. President, uh, please wait. I think Judge LaVange has some uh, questions for this witness. Uh, Judge LaVange, please uh, proceed. Oui, merci, Monsieur. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mrs. Sotso Chat. I do have a number of questions that I would like to put to you this morning to supplement what you said yesterday. My first questions concern the civil status of your family. At the request for release of your spouse, his lawyers submitted a certain number of documents to the chamber. Those include a copy of a family registration certificate, E. 275.8 and that registration is made out in the name of C. Long S-Y-L-A-N-G and on page 3 it sets down Mr. Kyosampon's alias as being C. Long. Is this factual? And if so, how long now has he been called C. Long? Answer. C. Long is a name seduced by his uh, siblings and relatives at home. So that name was used 
and then we put in the bracket that's the name known within the family. Ce n'est pas son nom officiel. It's not his official name, madam. The name that he may use in his family is not his official name, and therefore, since when has Mr. Kyusonpon been using the name Silong in official documents, and why? When we went to stay to live at Thailand, we made that family book. And we actually used that name, and with the bracket, we put his name, Kiu Sumpon, and we consulted with the Official, the registry official, and then it said that that is okay to use it. That's why we use it in in that way. Yeah, we'll pass it. Not very well. Let's move on to something else. On this registration certificate, four children appear to be listed. The first. Is a boy, and unless I am mistaken, you told us yesterday that he was born on the 4th of May 1974. But on this official document, he's declared as being born on the 6th of June 1974. So, which is accurate? The testimony you gave us yesterday, or what it says on the official document? My son was born, but he just used the date of birth by himself in his uh, ID card, and uh, I made the family book later on, and I did not ask him uh, what date of birth he used, and uh, he told me that's the date of birth that he used for his ID card. But in fact, my son was born on the fourth of May, 1974. But the date of birth in uh, that book was used by my son by himself and in his uh, ID card, and for that reason, I followed what he was what he used in his ID card. So the eldest of your children, as you told us yesterday, unless I am mistaken. Was sent to a children's unit at the age of three, where he was permanently catered for. I'd like to know who took the decision to send your child to a children's unit. Did anybody ask you for your opinion? Was the decision taken by your husband? Was it simply? Imposed on you? Were you able to contest it? How did all of that happen? In the office at that time, the decision was made by the one who supervised the office, and that. Applied also at the K3 office. They in fact asked us some questions, but we would not be able to refuse their request. And that applied in general to everybody, as the mothers would have to work, and we had to tend our children to at the childcare. You 
Yesterday, you told us that your child came back to see you from time to time. You said that the child was unhappy and didn't want to leave you. Who forced the child to leave you and go back to the children's unit? Who? When my child came to work, for example, to stay with us for one week, then we had to return him back within one week period. And that would mean it's easier for the mother to work. I requested for my child to come and visit me and I had the responsibility to return him within the period that I requested. Was he forced to go back? And if he was forced to go back, who was doing the forcing? Nobody forced because I made a request for him to visit me for one week. And of course, uh, anybody's children uh, would not want to, to go back. But when the time was up, I had to return him as nobody would be looking after him while I would uh, go to work. And that's what I told uh, my son. I had him for one week and I had to return him back. At any point in time, did your husband show any disagreement with what was imposed on your three-year-old? Did he complain or did he just obey Anka? Yes, he made uh, some complaints uh, with me, but that was the rule at where we stay, and the rule applied to everybody, and we could not do anything else. It's Did he complained to the person who was in charge of K1, K3, and if so, who was that person? No, he did not complain to others. He only complained to me. Where was your son when Phnom Penh was evacuated in 1979? Mr. President, I am not clear on the uh, question uh, when it comes to the liberation of Phnom Penh in 1979. President uh, Cheslavaj, could you please repeat your last question as the witness seems not to understand it? Madam. This is so such a yesterday. You said that you had a third child a very short while before Phnom Penh was taken by the Vietnamese in January 1979. And the question I'm asking you is, where was your son when Phnom Penh was taken in 1979? My son was at the children's center at the time.
Donc, so, neither your husband nor you yourself were looking after your son. I didn't, un, I didn't catch that answer. Perhaps you could repeat. When the, the Vietnamese attacked Campuchia, my son was at the children's center but before I left, I went to pick him up, and then we left together. And uh, that was in the afternoon of the 6th. I picked him up, and then we left. After that, oldest son comes a second child, a daughter, who was born on the 19th of September, 1976, or that at least is what the document says. Can you confirm that date of birth to us or not? Uh, could you please uh, clarify? Is it this, the 13th? I think it's the 13th, not the 18th. So she was born in September 1976, and you're telling me the 13th of September, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Bien, donc, uh, All right. Yesterday, madam, you told us that your daughter spoke with you, and thanks to her, you were able to understand the kind of of work that your husband was doing during the democratic Cambodia era. And I believe you said that your husband walked along with his daughter and together they went to visit warehouses where there was equipment and provisions stored. Is that correct? No, that is not correct. In fact, she went to his workplace in K3, not to the warehouse. At K3, there was no, no warehouse. The warehouse was located elsewhere. And he took the, my daughter only to his workplace at the K3. Hello. All right. Well, unless I'm mistaken, your daughter was barely 28 months old in 1979, in January. So what was she able to tell you about your husband's work that you yourself had not yet understood? What did she tell you with these uh, great long sentences? Did it uh, dwell at great length on things, or how was it? She did not uh, tell me at the time my daughter was uh, one, a little bit more than one year, she could uh, speak uh, some words. She was playing on her own. And uh, <coughs> by herself, she was playing and she was uh, pretending to speak uh, on the phone by using a piece of a stick as a phone. And she said, uh, no, no, 
she did not formally tell me, but I could only hear her speaking some words while playing by herself. I need to understand this. Was it or was it not? Thanks to your daughter that you understood what your husband did during the democratic Cambodia regime. Isn't that what you told us yesterday? I heard uh, my daughter while she was playing by herself saying uh, some words and I, I asked her why she kept saying uh, no, no. And then my husband told me she, he asked uh, the staff to prepare goods for the people at the best. He told me, that is my husband told me, but not my daughter. But upon hearing what my daughter said, I asked my husband and he told me. What did he tell you? Sometimes he was busy. He has to go and ask people through pe to prepare the goods. And sometimes he would tell me that that, that day he would be busy to prepare some uh, goods for the best so that he could not bring uh, the daughter with him. So mainly he told me about him preparing goods for the best. But at his office itself, no goods were stored. There was a, another a warehouse located elsewhere. But upon receiving instructions for goods to be prepared, then he would ask the staff to prepare those goods. Yeah. Very well. Let's come back to the activities of your husband and what you know about that at a later stage. Two further children are written down. A daughter born in 84 and a son in 87. And you told us that you also gave birth to another child, and that was the child that was born at the start of 1979 and who unfortunately died a little later. Is that correct? I think you told us that he passed away at the age of seven months. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Hello. With respect to you yourself, I have noted that you come from a village, pardon my pronunciation, called Kakpon, which is in the previa province. During democratic Kampuchea, was that area known as Sector 103? Yes, it is. Can you tell me how long the Prevea region had been liberated for by the revolutionary forces. I cannot recall the exact period. However, it was about one month or two months after uh, in 1970. But I cannot recall the exact period, and that was the, the time that my village uh, was liberated. It is. 
But was that before or after the announcement that Prince Norodom Sihanouk had been dethroned? It was after. Can you tell us a little bit about that moment of liberation, and can you tell us in particular if the inhabitants of Rovieng were evacuated? No, there was none. What do you mean? Do you mean that there was no evacuation? No, at the time, um, there was nobody living. Est-ce qu'à un moment, les gens de la ville de were the inhabitants of Rovien town evacuated? at any moment in time. At the time, I, I didn't know whether or not uh, there was evacuation because I uh, did not understand the situation. I did not know whether evacuation were undertaken. Est-ce que Les bons étaient toujours dans les pagodes. Were the monks still in the pagodas, or they had been forced to leave the pagodas? Back then, I still uh, saw monks uh, in pagodas. They had not left uh, pagodas yet. Et quand ont-ils quitté les pagodes? And when did they leave the pagodas? At the time of your marriage, were there still monks in pagodas? When I got married and I resided in Yangol, I did not uh, have a chance to go to the village, so I did not know uh, about all of this. Est-ce que vous avez noté la mise en place de Did you notice that cooperatives were being established au moment où vous vous-même vous partez dans le Maghreb At the time when you yourself went into the jungle to join the revolution had cooperatives been established No, uh, they had not been established yet. Quand avez-vous eu connaissance de la mise en place? When did you become aware of the establishment of cooperatives? My apology, Your, own, your Honor. Uh, all of this, I. Uh, do not recall because I was not a politician back then. I was only a cook at the time. I did not know the existence of a cooperative and when uh, they were uh, first established. D'où venait la nourriture dont vous serviez pour Where was the food you used to cook come from? Did it come from individual peasants or from cooperatives? As for the food, the food stuff we prepared into dishes, I did not know uh, where they uh, came from. Whenever they uh, brought it for me, they did not tell me where they had taken it from. They just uh, put it for me, and then I had to prepare uh, food uh, at that time. That was it. Mm -hmm. 
les repas. Donc. Now, regarding the food you prepared, we are going to talk about where the leaders lived on the banks of the Chinit River. Was it called B-17? Uh, at that place, I did not know what it was called, but uh, generally I knew that it was called uh, Chinit uh, Office. I did not know the code number of this office. Est-ce qu'il y a un endroit qui s'appelle B-17 Is there a place called B-17, which is not the Chinit office you've referred to Yes, uh, there was. Et où était situé ce B-17 And where was B-17 located B-17 was located uh, back then in some round village Stung Trang district I do not recall the commune but it was located in uh, Stung Trang district Kampung Cham province Hello au bureau de Chinit. Now, in the Chinit office in B17, at B20 or elsewhere, were meals eaten in common? Yes, at that time we ate uh, communally. Est-ce que dans ces endroits, on avait pratiqué une... Was any form of collectivization practiced at those locations? Apparently, um, there was an... Quand vous rencontrez M. Kyosan. Yesterday, he told us that when you met Mr. Kyosan Pan, all you knew was that he was an intellectual. Did you ever hear of a document titled Statement by Patriotic Intellectuals, signed by 91 intellectuals who had sought refuge in the liberated zones? Did you ever hear of any such statement? No, I did not. Est-ce qu'il vous arrivait de discuter avec Did you ever have to discuss with your future husband or your husband his role? that of the other leaders and what the revolution was all about. My husband never discussed. The leadership of the revolutionary forces, he only discussed with me his personal matters La révolution ne vous concernait pas et c'était pas un sujet Was the revolution not something of some concern to you was it not worthy of concern My apology, Your, your Honor. I am afraid I don't get your question. 
vous étiez parti. You went into the jungle to join the revolution and experience the revolution. You underwent training sessions. Those training sessions were conducted by a person called Yen. So I suppose that you were committed to the revolution. You were not in the jungle by chance. Did you discuss your revolutionary, your respective revolutionary commitments together, or it wasn't something of interest to you? They did talk about uh, a revolution, and my uh, husband also discussed uh, the revolution. But what was important at that time, the rationale behind uh, our revolutionary um, commitment was to attack uh, the uh, imperialist power and the aggressors uh, in order to liberate our country. And nothing else other than uh, what I have described was discussed. Was it a matter of discipline, madam? Do you know what I mean by discipline? Was it important to obey Anka? To the best of my knowledge, uh, I could only describe as what I said. Uh, at that time, when I first joined the revolution, this was the uh, commitment. Uh, we discussed the uh, counterattack against uh, imperialist uh, power and the uh, struggle and resistance against um, the imperialist power. And in order to uh, win, uh, we have to be willing to sacrifice. And when I I joined the revolution at that time. I was convinced because I witnessed by myself that there was imperialist forces invading our country. There was coup d'etats. These were all the uh, pre-existing uh, uh, condition that uh, induced me to joining the revolution. That's what I knew uh, from the event at that time. désolé, madame, mais vous n'avez. I am sorry, madame. You have not answered my question. My question to you was as follows. Was discipline something important to you? Did you have to obey Anka or you had to discuss or argue whatever was, given, was said as instructions? Of course, uh, discipline was uh, an important factor as well. Discipline was meant uh, for uh, all uh, comrades, all uh, members uh, to be uh, abided by. And we had to be self-disciplined in, in each place. We had to behave properly. And this was an important factor, of course. During that period, did you ever hear your husband voice doubts, concerns, or ask questions, or you always saw him as someone who agreed with the leaders who were with you at the office in Chinit? at B-17 and at else any other location? At that time, I did not uh, pay attention to it. I only minded uh, my own business. I uh, carry out uh, my day-to-day uh, -day, uh, task. I did not uh, pay attention to such a thing. Uh, I did not even pay attention to what he did and I did not know. Um, I did not know what uh, he did, whether or not he raised any concern or things like that.
Quand avez-vous appris When did you learn that your husband fulfilled important positions, Vice Prime Minister of the Gronk, Commander in Chief of the Revolutionary Armed Forces? When did you get to know that? Never, never had I known uh, such a position uh, he held because he had never told me about it. And particularly uh, people uh, around me at that time uh, considered uh, him as one of the intellectual and they uh, did not consider him as uh, somebody in uh, an important, an important positions. Uh, they did not know uh, that uh, he was holding uh, the position of prime minister or the uh, commander in chief. Uh, that I did not know at the time. He um, he did not uh, tell. Me. He told me that, that he was not somebody uh, important in the leadership. That's what he told me at that time. So uh, we uh, did not consider ourselves as a senior uh, official. Uh, I myself regarded myself as uh, an ordinary citizen. Madam. Madam, can anybody who welcomes Prince Norodom Sihanouk in 1973 when he visited the liberated zone be called an ordinary person? Or oh, did you hear at that time that your husband held important positions? Back then, uh, his position was not important. He was not a senior uh, leader. At that time, it was a mere front, a front uh, that um, garnered uh, forces to welcome uh, the uh, former king. And uh, nobody regarded it as uh, somebody in influential position. Who welcomed the former king? Who welcomed the former king? Was that person Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, or your husband? At that time, Pol Pot was also present, and Mr. Kiu Sampon was also there uh, to welcome the former king. Qui était à la tête du front pour Who was at the head of the front to welcome Prince Norodom Sihanouk? Was that person Pol Pot or your husband? At that time, I did not pay attention to it. I did not know who was the leader of the front who went to welcome Prince uh, Sihanouk. Madam, hier, oui. Madam, yesterday you stated that at the time of that visit you were at the service of Prince Norodom Sihanouk. You were therefore at the very forefront, such as to be able to see what was happening. Was your husband not the person who was officially in charge of welcoming Prince Norodom Sihanouk? 
At that time, I was uh, in charge of the uh, kitchen. I prepare food and prepare rooms uh, for them. When they went to, on they when they uh, uh, went on their uh, official duty, I did not accompany them. Avez-vous entendu les mots de Did you hear the terms Central Committee, Standing Committee, Congress of the Funk? Did you hear or see your husband writing speeches? Back then, I did not know all about this because I was my job was confined to only uh, preparing uh, foods uh, for them. I was not a politician. I did not know my husband's work. J'aimerais comprendre, Madame. I would like to understand something, Madame. Were you not interested in such matters and uh, were you completely useless or you had occasion to put questions to your husband? I am of the view that uh, this sort of thing, I did not took interest in because I, at that time, uh, work in the kitchen. I prepared uh, food uh, for my husband and others, and I did not bother to ask him questions about the nature of his work. We had uh, our responsibility to undertake at that time. Very well. When your husband left, perhaps you were not aware of that, but he went to China and elsewhere. Were such matters of interest to you? Did he consider them of interest to you? Did he talk to you about them, or he never talked to you about them? This was uh, solely his um, job. I uh, did not know. He only told me that he went uh, to China to meet with uh, the prince. C'est tout. Vous disiez. And that is all. You would say. I am going to meet the prince. I do not know when I will come back. Is that all he told you? That was uh, it. He never mentioned when he would uh, return back home. Est-ce que par hasard vous avez entendu parler de sept super trains? Did you perchance ever hear of the so-called seven super traitors? No, I never heard of it. Hier, vous avez déclaré. Yesterday, you stated that prior to the 17th of April, you were at K17 and then at B20. And you subsequently said that shortly after the birth of your first child, you located to the NIAC office. I didn't quite understand your testimony. Is there an office called the NIAC office? And if yes, what, it, what is it all about? After the birth of your first child, where were you located?
after the birth of my first child, I stay in uh, office uh, 24, uh, K30, and then to uh, B17. Yesterday, you also stated that approximately 10 to 15 days before the fall of Phnom Penh, your husband left you saying that the fall of Phnom Penh was imminent. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Est-ce qu'il vous a dit ce qui allait se passer? Did he tell you what was going to happen at the time of the fall of Phnom Penh? He did not tell me anything. Et ça ne vous intéressait pas? And it was not of any interest to you? At the time, uh, this was an important event, so it was the task of the leaders, of the politicians, so I was not uh, involved. I only knew my areas of responsibility and whether or not uh, the day was important uh, I had to only focus on my work. Vous avez également déclaré hier. Yesterday, you also stated that I believe this is what you said that approximately one week before the fall of Phnom Penh, when you were still a Stung train. Kyo Sampan came to meet you and spent the night with you. Is that correct? No, it was not in Stung Trang. Quand avez-vous revu votre mari après la chute de? When did you see your husband again after the fall of Phnom Penh, and where? A week later, I went to meet him in Doktaul village. Uh, we stay overnight over there, one day and one night. C'était combien de temps? And that was how long after the fall of Phnom Penh? It was about a week after the fall of Phnom Penh. And how did you hear about the fall of Phnom Penh? At that time, I knew that fighting had been going on. On one side, it was the revolutionary forces and on the other side, it was opponent force. And the uh, revolutionary conquered uh, the war, so Phnom Penh fell. That's what I knew. Madam, did you know that Phnom Penh, like other towns, a priori, had been evacuated. 
Did you ever hear about the population of Phnom Penh being obliged to leave the city and evacuated down the highways? At the beginning, that is immediately after the liberation, I did not know about that or anything about the evacuation. I thought the people would stay put, but upon my arrival at the railway station, everything was so quiet, and then realized the people had been evacuated. We'll come back to the point where you came to Phnom Penh, but before that, I'd like you to tell us if your husband, Mr. Kyo Song Pong, shared with you his understanding of the fall of Phnom Penh. Did he tell you how the events unfolded? Did he tell you what happened? Did he tell you what your future was going to be. He never spoke about what would happen in the future. And that I minded my own work and he minded his own work. Madam, do you know if your husband had a family, a mother, brothers and sisters, friends living in Phnom Penh? Did he talk to you about them? Did he tell you what had happened to them? Later on, yes, he spoke about that, about his uh, relatives who were evacuated. Cool. When did he tell you about this? I cannot recall the exact time, but it was after we had stayed in Phnom Penh for more than a year. So, for more than a year, Kyo Song Pong lived by your side, knowing that his family, his brothers and his sisters, had been evacuated from Phnom Penh and it didn't affect him in any way. You didn't see any change. You didn't ask any questions. You didn't wish to know where they were. He talked about that uh, with uh, some concerns. In particular, his uh, family members who had been evacuated. He said he didn't know where, where they had been evacuated uh, to. That's the extent uh, to what he said. 
However, he added that uh, things uh, should be okay for them since uh, they would be given a shelter. That's what he, he told me about. And he told you this after a year had gone by. Yes. Let's come back to your time in Phnom Penh. Yesterday, madam, if I was listening to your testimony correctly, you described some pretty arduous living conditions, meals that were more than frugal, accommodation without any comfort, without furniture. Is that what we should be understanding? Did you lack for food at any time during that time in Phnom Penh? Uh, to me, that kind of shortage was not a, a big problem. Madam, did you see any people, children, infants, old people dying of hunger? Did you ever witness this around you in your entourage? At that time, I did not go anywhere to witness anything or to hear anything about that. The place where I stay was quiet. In the Silver Pagoda, or in K1, or in K3, did people eat communally? Did everybody eat the same food as Nunchir, as Yang Sari, as Wan Wet, or whoever? Was it the same food and the same meals for everybody? Yes, the same food for everybody. So the food was inadequate. That's what I understood yesterday from what you were saying. Is that correct? Did you notice if Yang Sari or Nun Chia became thin and was starting to suffer from malnutrition during those times? At that time, in general, the food was not that uh, shortage. However, because the war had just ended, so we would eat what we what we had, and that was it. Alors, est-ce que votre mari? Did you? Did your husband ever tell you that sometimes he had some rather good meals, that he attended banquets, for example, 
were you aware that there were banquets in Phnom Penh during the democratic Cambodia era? At that time, it seemed that my husband did not have any delicious uh, meals, and he never speak about uh, the banquet. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, I'm wondering if the AV service can put a certain number of photos on the screens. E 190.1.143 E 190.1.178 E 190.182 and E 190.1 would it be possible to display these pictures in succession on the screen, please? Yes, court officer, please uh, present those uh, photos on the screen. Well, while the technical side is getting ready, we might come back to another question. You explained very carefully to us about the difficulties you faced in living in K1 and K3, but what I'd like to know, madam, is if you ever went to the former house of your husband's family, la maison, I mean, the house where your in laws lived when they had to leave Phnom Penh. Did you ever go and see that house yourself? No, I did not. Vous n'en aviez pas les clés? Didn't you have a set of keys? I did not know where his house was located. Vous n'y êtes donc jamais allé. So you never went there, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Alors, Monsieur le Président, serait-il... Mr. President, <coughs> would it be possible to give Mrs. Sosochat document E3 stroke 385? This is the record of an interview with a witness that we are going to be hearing shortly. For that reason, I can't give the person's name, but I believe that Mrs. Sosojet's counsel can tell 
her who that individual is, and she can tell us if she knows the witness. So I'm asking if this document can be handed to Mrs. Sosajet. President, uh, yes, court officer, could you deliver the document from the judge for the witness examination? And uh, judge counsel, please indicate the relevant uh, name of the person and whether she knows or not. And please uh, do not mention the name. I certainly don't want you to read that entire record, madam. I'm just asking you if you know the person concerned. Have you heard of this person? Do you know who it was? I knew a person by Chung, but I do not know whether that person's full name was uh, Lane Chung, because the Chung I know was the was his driver. Well, we were trying to avoid giving the person's name, but I think it's a bit late now. So this is indeed the record of an interview with Leng Chun and this person was your husband's driver. So you said you knew a driver called Chung, is that right? Yes. Alors, voilà ce que dit so this is what Chung says. I often went with Kyo Sampong to see his mother who was living near Bunking Kong. In that house, there didn't seem to be a place to work. There was a little table, a sofa for the guests, and a hammock in which uh, they relaxed. There was no personal secretary, nor was there anybody to answer the phone. But inside the house, there was a fixed-line telephone for him to use. He, when he went to work, he locked the house, and he and his wife, Rin, had possession of the keys. Now, does this remind you of anything or nothing whatsoever? That was the time that we were living at the K3. That how was prepared for us uh, at the K3. I uh, mean, the house that Chung spoke about. Or why, a moment ago, did you say that you never visited the house of your in-laws? I went to visit the house of my mother-in-laws, but it was not his house. 
It was the house that was prepared for him. And some months later, she was brought in to, the, to live in that house, and I went to visit her. My apology, you referred to the house that uh, Kiel Sampon stayed in Phnom Penh, but I did not know about that house. But what Chum said in this statement was the house. that he stayed in after the liberation of Phnom Penh. Did you meet your mother-in-law? Yes or no? Yes, I did. Hello. When Phnom Penh was evacuated, did she hide? How was she found? How was your husband able to get back into contact with his mother? To my understanding, his wife went uh, searching for him at the Pagoda, and then she went to the villages to uh, look for him, and actually she met him in the forest. If I have this correctly, your mother-in-law left Phnom Penh before the evacuation of the city. And did she leave the capital city before or after the 17th of April? She had left before that. So she met up again with her son. Where did this happen? In K-17, K-20s, Dung Treng, Chinit, where? It was at uh, 17. After I delivered my child, she also came. And how did she know where to find your husband? Had Kyosampan asked his mother to come and join him? As uh, he told me, his mother could not live in Phnom Penh because her son already had uh, left. So she went uh, to look for him in the pagoda and later on to the villages and then to write on an ask card with the people that she knew and continue her journey and it was likely that people who were living in the liberated uh, zone knew about her son so it seems that she did not know where her son was, but she was led to meet her son by the people who knew her and who knew Kilsen Porn.
et votre belle-mère. Did your mother-in-law try and find out where her other children were after the evacuation of Phnom Penh after the 17th of April 1975? Do you know what happened to them, your brothers-in-law and your sisters-in-law? After the liberation, he tries to look for the family members, and he actually spoke to me that he was uh, rather concerned. He did not know the whereabouts of uh, his uh, mother. Bien, on va. I don't think we're getting very far with this. Let's change the subject. You told us that you didn't have the chance to leave Phnom Penh. Is that true? During the period of Democratic Kampuchea, did you stay in Phnom Penh for the whole time, or did you ever get an opportunity to travel? I never went anywhere. However, occasionally I went to places nearby where I stayed to visit uh, my mother or to K1 office. But when you say your mother, you mean your own mother or your mother-in-law? I visited my mother-in-law. Did you ever accompany your husband when he went on visits to the rural areas with Prince Norodom Sihanouk and his wife. Did you ever do that? No, I did not. Record of interview with Mr. King Un, document E3 stroke 380, ERN in French 0048-5434, ERN in English 0036-5646. This witness tells us as follows, when Samdek Sienok and Samdek Peknut went to the cooperatives, I saw Kyosampong and his wife going with them everywhere. I saw all of these things because I was seeking to acquire information in the cooperatives. I met them out there by chance. So is the witness getting it wrong, madam? I never for once went with some some night and his wife or with a pan note. 
not even once. I did not even meet them in person. I don't really know what uh, this, uh, the person who made the statement uh, made with could be somebody else. President, I thank you, Judge Lavange, and thank you, witness. We will have a 20 minute break and return at 10 to 11. Court officer, could you assist the witness during the break and have her returned to the courtroom at 10 to 11? The court is now adjourned.